Health 54 right here on your Digital First Pan African News Network, TOS Television. I am Rose Audu. The Director General of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, Nigeria's top food and drug regulating agency, Mojishola Adeyaya, during a press briefing in Abuja on Thursday, announced that the agency has approved for Russian Sputnik COVID-19 vaccine to be used in the country. The approval is coming after the World Health Organization, the European Union and UNICEF expressed concern over the vaccine. The WHO had stated that the UN Health Agency during its inspection of the four Sputnik five manufacturing sites found six issues during the visit to the Pharma Standard Ufa vitamin plant in Ufa, southern Russia. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, 716,494 suspected cases of typhoid fever, including 198 deaths, were recorded in selected health zones of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Of the 204 tests performed, 191 blood cultures and 13 fecal cultures. One test was positive. In 2020, a total of 715,920 suspected cases of typhoid fever were reported, including 178 deaths. Typhoid fever caused by the bacterium Salmonella typhi is a life-threatening bacterial infection. Typhoid fever is still common in the developing world, where it affects about 21 million people annually. Salmonella typhi lives only in humans. Persons with typhoid fever carry the bacteria in their bloodstream and intestinal tract. And in Rwanda, it says it has received a grant of $53 million from the Global Fund as a contribution towards malaria prevention and treatment efforts running between 2020 and 2024. The head of the Malaria and Other Parasitic Infections Unit at the Rwanda Biomedical Center, Amaibu Mtuyarami, in an interview with a Rwandan newspaper, says that with effect from this month, the Global Fund package will be broken down and used over the next three years to cover specific areas. Rwanda also received funding from the U.S. through the Presidential Malaria Initiative to the tune of around $18 million. And with no report from Lagos, which is the country's epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic, Nigeria on Wednesday recorded 48 new coronavirus cases. Nigerian Center for Disease Control and CDC, which gave the update on its Facebook page on Tuesday night, however, did not explain the reason why the update from Lagos was missing. The NCDC said the new infections were recorded in seven states and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. The agency added that no new deaths was recorded on Wednesday, keeping the fatality toll at 2,125. Out of the seven states and the FCT that contributed to Wednesday's data, Ondo recorded the highest figure of 14, Oyo had 10, Gombe took, came the third with uh, six cases, while the FCT recorded five. A good state reported four, and the trial of Delta, Ekiti, and River State registered three new infections each. According to the NCDC, a total of 164,652 recoveries have been recorded nationwide so far, with about 2,000 cases still active across the country. And about 23 million children lost out on basic immunizations through routine immunization services in 2020, 3.7 million higher than in 2019. This is according to a report by the World Health Organization and United Nations Children's Emergency Fund on Thursday. The first official figures to reflect global service disruptions due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The latest figures show a majority of countries experienced drops in childhood vaccination rates in 2020. And this is TRS Television Network. You're watching Health 54. Do stay tuned. <music> Thank you. 
Welcome back. Leading medics have warned a surge in flu and other respiratory viruses could put pressure on people's health and the NHS this winter if proactive measures are not put in place. They say testing for flu, COVID-19 and a respiratory virus, carbon in children and the elderly, which is known as RSV, may help doctors treat cases more quickly. The Academy of Medical Sciences report calls for people with any symptoms to isolate and stay at home. This will help protect against all respiratory viruses this winter. The WHO Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus has said the World Health is currently the world is currently experiencing a third wave of the coronavirus following the surge in the deadly Delta variant of the virus. According to the Global Health Body, the current spread of the COVID-19 Delta variant, along with increased social mobility and the inconsistent use of proven public health measures, was driving increases in both case numbers and deaths. Tedros Ghebreyesus made this known on Wednesday in a remark to the Earth meeting of the Emergency Committee on COVID-19 established under international health regulations, a treaty that guides global response to public health risk. And the Australian state of Victoria, home to its second largest city, Melbourne, has announced it is the entrance a snap lockdown late on Thursday after it recorded two more local cases of the coronavirus. The lockdown is expected to last until Tuesday next week. TOS News understands that this is the fifth lockdown Victoria has experienced since the pandemic began. The latest outbreak brings the total number of viruses there to 18. The decision by Victoria means that about 40% of Australia's population is now under a stay-at-home order. And more than 10 drug firms have been fined £260 million by Britain's competition regulator for overcharging the National Health Service for a stereo that rose from £70 to £88 a pack in under eight years. The Competition and Markets Authority said on Thursday that the breaches meant the NHS paid over 10,000% more for single packs of 10 mg and 20 mg hydrocortisone tablet in 2016 than they were paying in 2008. The South Sudan Health Ministry has assured citizens not to be alarmed about the country running out of AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines coming just two months after donating its doses to Kenya. In March this year, South Sudan received 132,000 vaccine doses from the COVAX facility. After concluding that it did not have the resources to administer the jobs before they expire, South Sudan in May decided to return its vaccines. Kenya immediately expressed interest to take up a consignment of 72,000 AstraZeneca Oxford vaccines. And that is Health 54 right here on your Digital First Pan African News Network, TOS Television. For more updates, visit www.tostvnetwork.com. Do follow and like TOS Television Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. Remember, health is wealth. So till I come your way again, do stay healthy. I am Rose Audu, and many thanks for watching.